Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to look at a basic configuration of a couple of switches and PCs just to build up basic network connectivity. So we've got our two switches, switch one and switch two. We've got our two PCs, PCA and PCB. I'll be using this system so you see I'll be hot switching between the systems up at top. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the two switches because they've been off. I just wanted to show you how long they take to boot. So, I'm just going to fast forward to this next bit and... So, as you can see, the few um, the switches take a few minutes to boot up. So, let's have a look at what we've got. So, we've got our topology. Here we've got PCA, PCB, the two switches. We've got our instructions and how we're going to go through. So, we're going to give switch number one this IP address, switch number two this IP address, PCA 10 and PCB 11. So let's have a look at the instructions. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the switches, go from user mode to privilege exec with enable, go to configure terminal, set up the host name, turn off uh, DNS resolution, it's really helpful for fixing up typos, and then set up our basic security. So let's do that first. So we get we always get asked this question, do we want to enter the setup wizard? And we always want to say no, because the setup wizard's no good. So enable, then configure, configure terminal. All right, now the first instruction was to set up the host name. So we can host name S1 for S1. And as you can see, the prompt changes immediately. And we want to, let's check the instructions again, make sure we do it in the right order. Then we do no IP domain lookup and set up our base security. All right, set up our base security. So no space, I need space for my lookup. And now we want enable secret. And we want that to be class. We go line console zero. Password Cisco login. Let's check the instructions again. Excellent. So we've set up this on the first switch. Now we need to give the first switch an IP address and we're going to give it VLAN 1 because remember switches you don't configure the interfaces for IP addresses you configure the SVI, the switched virtual interface. So we want interface VLAN 1 IP address 192.168.1.1 and a subnet mask. And we'll type no shutdown because I'm pretty sure it was in shutdown. Excellent. Now we need to always set up a banner because banners are fun. We need a good banner. So you have, remember the start delimiter. This, this character here is going to be the, both the start and the end. So why don't, we, why don't we do a bit of cheating and let's actually highlight this and copy this into our copy banner to make our lives a little bit easier. So, exit, banner, message of the day, hash, and I'm going to actually paste that text in, because I, oops, whoa, there we go, that wouldn't have worked, better fix that up, paste, and we end it with, a, whoops, we end it with a hash, because we want to Remember the hash is the start and the hash is the end. Now you may notice here too that a little dollar symbol has appeared on the command line. All this means is that we've typed so many characters that it's gone off the line. So that just shows us that much. All right, so we've set up a banner. What else do we have to do? And that's it. So we've, we've, we've set up switch one. We type end, we get to the end, and we do copy run start. Oops, hang on. Actually, that's one thing I'm gonna teach you today. See how that annoying message comes up every single time? So let's go in and fix that up. It's not in the instructions, bit of a bonus command. So I go line console zero, and it's a new command called logging synchronous. And what this does is it returns the prompt. So that, that, that message, that error codes don't interrupt you. So now when we type end, notice that we can start typing, but it doesn't matter because the prompt has automatically been turned, returned to us. So we want to do copy run 
running config to startup config. And we press enter, wait a few seconds, it's compiling, and now it's done. So now we've done a backup of this switch. Let's check the instructions before. All right, let's make sure that everything, we do a show run to see the configuration. So, show running config, press enter. And here we are, here's the config. So there's our host name, we set that. Here's our enable secret, we set that. A lot of this other stuff's fluff about, we won't worry about that. There's all our interfaces, we just press space to the end. And there is our IP address on VLAN one. And there's our crazy, crazy banner that we set up a minute ago. So let's actually test that banner just quickly. So if we type exit, you can press enter a few times, there it is. It's not very pretty, obviously, I probably could make, um, probably could make it a little bit better, but we'll, um, we'll worry about that in a minute. So the login password we set was Cisco, and now we're in to user mode. And then we type enable, and the password for enable was class, and now I've logged in perfectly. So it's all good. So let's go back to the instructions. Now show version is a really useful command because that tells us about the hardware, the software, and a few other different things like that. So let's do show version and let's examine our switch. Show version. All right, so it's Cisco, of course, it's a 2960. It's running a LAN based software, version 15.2, brackets two, dash E7. And if you actually look, this is the name here. This is the name of the actual iOS itself. 2960 land base, 1522 E7. A bit more of the model number. There's a serial number. It's got, oops, sorry. Scroll up it. It's got 24 fast Ethernet interfaces and two gigabit interfaces. There's a few other interesting stats about it. So show version, useful command for figuring out lots of different things, serial numbers, version, hardware platform, all that sort of stuff. So we checked all those things out, we got all that sort of stuff. Now, let's look at the actual interfaces. So show IP interface brief is a very useful command. So show IP interface brief. Alrighty, so there's our SVI, our virtual interface. VLAN 1, 192.168.1.1, and here's the other interfaces. So we've got a couple of other interfaces plugged in, and the PC is plugged into port 6, I'm pretty sure, and that's good to go. Excellent. All right, so, so it looks like we've set everything up for switch 1. So now let's do exactly the same for switch 2, but this time we won't use any of the instructions. So answer no to the setup question. Enable to go from user to privileged. Conf oops, config, learn to learn how to type, configure terminal, we're on host name, S2, interface, oh, no IP domain lookup, so for type no IP domain, oops, domain lookup, we want to set the enable secret, the enable secret to be class, we want to go line, uh, console zero and we want password Cisco and login and we want to exit out of that and we want to set a banner dollar banner hash no um, oops um, authorized access right, clearly I've put a typo in there but it doesn't matter and we need to configure an IP address. So interface VLAN 1 IP address 192.168.1.2. No shut. That's it. We've now programmed this switch. Basic security, host name, fix up our typos, and an IP address on VLAN 1. So that's got an IP address, and now let's do PCA, this is PCA. Now right down here in the bottom right hand corner is a little drawing of a computer. We right click on that, right click, say open network settings, and then we click on ethernet, because that's where, we're, that's where we're doing the ethernet settings, and change adapter options. Now, there's actually a few different ways to get to the screen, but this is, I find this one of the quickest ways to do it. So we've got local internet connection, right click on that and go properties, 
And then here's all the properties of that network card. And the only thing we care about today is IPv4. So we click on internet version four and we click on properties. And here we have to set our IP address. So there's no DHCP server on this network because it's a closed little sandbox. So we click on user at your following address. 192.168.1.10 for PC1. Click on OK. Now we don't need to fork our way because we're just doing a basic test. So we close all that and now we go over to PCB. Do exactly the same thing. Right click, open network settings, Ethernet, change adapter, right click, properties, scroll down, IPv4, 192.168.1.11. And just press tab and it pre fills the mask for you, which is really nice. So we click OK, OK, OK. And now let's see what we've got. So let's verify that our settings have been taken. The command to do that is ipconfig. You guys can't see that, so I might just spend two seconds making that a little bit bigger. So ipconfig, and that gives us our IP address. So there it is there. Now, let us ping. I'm trying to ping the other PC, which we set was 10, I'm pretty sure. And that works. So PC B to A works. And one of the switches, switch one was one, I think. Now, sometimes the first ping fails because there's a lot of ARP happening. We'll talk about ARP in the coming weeks. So switch one works. And ping 102.168.1.2. Once again, the first thing fails, bit of bit of handshaking and network maintenance and overheads going on in the background, but once that's done, everything works fine. So we'll so that's it. So now PCB can ping everything. And we'll just do a similar sort of check from switch one. So ping 192.168.1.10. One perfect. Eleven, perfect. So, and we'll do two as well. So remember ping is a two way street. So if one person can ping the other person, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that person can ping you back again as well. So now switch one can ping everything and PCB can ping everything. So pretty sure everything you ping, we'll just go back to the topology. So this is our topology. So we got PCA was 10, PCB was 11, switch one was one, switch two was two, and everything can now ping each other. So congratulations. You've just set up a basic switch and end device configuration. So thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe, click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment with what you'd like me to make for my next video. I'll see you in the next one.